Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Welcome back to Overanalyzing Covers and Past Drama, the series. This is the more than equal sequel to the episode about the Monera variant cover. A lot of you had a lot to say and I actually got one of my favorite comments ever, which I will highlight right now, which was finally a cover I can get behind. Crass, but it made me laugh. So one of the comments I saw over and over again was a link to a particular Spider-Man cover that for many was seen as the reverse Uno card of covers. This is when it came to people refuting the whole Spider-Man was never presented this way ever argument as put forth by sources like Elle Magazine. Elle Magazine? I still can't. It was this cover right here. This cover. This one. The smoking gun of covers. I just realized that there's coffee on the bottom of mine. That makes me sad, but it's also not surprising. Yes, I have it. I've seen it. This cover in particular has for many been a ha. While you were playing checkers, I was playing chess or Uno. The defense rests. So I wanted to look at this cover because while I see similarities, I also see several differences. Some in the art style and some in some societal perceptions and just background knowledge of where the covers are coming from. But also I get why it came to be presented the way it did. A lot of that I think has to do with the tone of the reporting on the Monero cover itself. A lot of which just ended up devolving into attacks. And then the other side attacked. And then the other side attacked back. And then the Fire Nation attacked attacked. Also, I was right. Six years was not enough time. I warned you to get tea. The tea was not a frivolous appeal. If you already have the calming tea with you, then you can be prepared. Also, yeah, this is, there's real tea in here. You know, like YouTubers are like, oh, I'm sipping the tea and there's nothing in here. There's, there's coffee. I mean, at least there's a drink in it. So we're going to do a quick and obviously rambly follow up. Let's get started. But before we do, I'm Sasha. And if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, stick around and join us on this crazy comics journey. It can get real serious. It can get real light. Anything can happen. I hope that you enjoy this shirt and know which iconic movie it is from, I would tell you, but the first rule is that we're not allowed to talk about it. So these two covers, the J. Scott Campbell one and the Monero one, let's start with the similarities in pose. Very similar. And so some feel that on her cover, she too is in a creepy crawly spider kind of pose, like a spider. Number two, butt crack on display. Some people are like, you see the crack? That crack right there? That's crack. And crack is whack. So some feel that the presentation is the same, that ready for examination pose in a costume with very forgiving fabric. The other argument tends to be that this cover does not stand alone, that you will find Spidey butt up on many a cover. A Todd McFarlane cover also came up. And they felt like we're going to talk about sexualization on the one cover, why not on these ones too? Check and mate. My chest head is downstairs. I can't have everything up here. However, for me, what I feel comes across as different, especially in these two particular covers, is the intent. The character is being shown off in both images, but the rationale and intent are different. Monero, with his history and repertoire and focus on sexuality, presented his cover in that way. His view being that it is empowering, that by presenting his females this way, it gives them agency, an agency in their sexuality, which he views as powerful. Quindi, non è detto che la protagonista bella sia l'oggetto che si passa di mano in mano, eccetera. Potrebbe benissimo essere una donna invece autodeterminata, protagonista assoluta delle proprie scelte. Io devo dire che nei miei fumetti normalmente è così, cioè le mie protagoniste sono... Hence, the presented Spider-Woman for many, especially those familiar with his work and the backstory or who were made aware of it through all of the kerfuffle that surrounded it, came through as a sexualized cover. Also, rightly or wrongly, people tend to have a different response when you see this pose on a man versus a woman. People react differently to things. There's lots of reasons why. Is that to say that the Spider-Man pose cannot be viewed as sexualized or be sexualized? Absolutely not, because of course it can. However, it does tend to take some people longer to get there, and it can be more of an afterthought than a forethought. Though again, that varies from individual to individual. And some felt that that element was just entirely dismissed, like it, just, it wasn't even a thing, it wasn't real. It's a woozy, it's a wazzy. However, what tends to jump out on many Spidey covers for me is they are still fetishizing the character, but in a different way. And a type of highlighting you tend to see with males on covers a bit more, which is the heroic cool element. He's cool. Look at how cool he is. His thighs are out of control. 
Spidey on this cover is being drawn by, for some, an iconic Spider-Man artist, who has a very specialized style that's often very long-limbed and focuses more on the sentiment or idea of a character, like that famous Mary Jane cover. People love to tear that one apart for the inconsistencies of it anatomically, but it's trying to convey something different. It's not trying to convey this is how a woman sits, it's trying to convey a feeling. This cover is like, wow, he's an action, he's the Spider-Man. I think to view these covers the same way is definitely possible especially if you never viewed the Monero one as sexual in the first place. But I think if you are aware of the context behind both, it does take a little bit of maneuvering and removal of some of that context to be like, these are the same. Case in point, no other points valid or accepted. Also for me at least, it helps that Spidey is doing something on this cover, like he's webbing up some bad guys, but I mean Spidey also has a long proud history of doing essentially nothing on its covers. I'm um, web swinging, I'm um, crawling. Spider-Man. <laughs> That's when you know your character is good. Like, he doesn't even need to do anything. He can stand there and you will still buy this. However, I see why people got so in arms about this cover and a lot of it comes back to the tone of the coverage itself. A lot of the arguments against the Monero cover and the way they were presented did not always or often did not go out of their way to present a counterpoint. It would get very, very Matilda. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm big, you're little and there's nothing you can do about it. Which is how you end up with statements like you would never see Spider-Man in a pose like this from Elle magazine. Although it being Elle magazine, like comics aren't really their forte at all. I'm not really surprised to get a statement like that from Elle. Get your spring summer looks, also your Spider-Man comics. I actually laughed after that quote in the last video. I get what they were trying to say, but because they didn't present everything else with it, it was pretty disingenuous. What could have been said is that while we have seen Spidey in this pose, we feel the connotations are different. I mean, for me, the focus in that video was very much on the very aspect of that cover and just the fact that it happened and got so blown up all of the coverage around it and some people were like why who cares and I'm like well people obviously still care look it's still having an impact the way an argument is presented can make a huge difference I mean of course obviously you're gonna have people who are gonna come in with a foregone conclusion and you could say anything and it wouldn't matter however some people claim that it makes no difference how you present an argument or there's another claim that it doesn't even matter you should be able to come in all guns blazing however you want and people just need to deal with it and if they can't can't deal with it, too bad, get your tiny violin. You know, the bulldozer approach, the burn it down approach, raise the earth, salt it. However, I happen to think it does make a difference, not only in whether people listen to you or not, but also in how they're going to respond. I mean, you can't control people's responses, but you can sometimes mitigate the type of responses you're going to get. Like if someone walks up to you with a piece of cake and then slaps you in the face right before they give it to you, it doesn't really matter how great the cake is or it's not going to for a lot of people, they're gonna be like, why did you slap me? Of course, that's a generalization. And some people are gonna go hard no matter what, even if you crawl up to them with the cake. My liege, this cake for you. Also, people sent me some great suggestive Spider-Man covers. And some of them were completely different from the Monero one, but were far more compelling. I mean, if you want a counterpoint, just look at this one. Just look at it, look at how hard it's going. People look at and see things different ways, literally, for a variety of reasons, from the impulse of images sent to to our brain to their societal positionings. It does make a difference. So I can see why people view these as the same and why some people don't. I can also see why you would get very invested in viewing them as the same or not. However, whether you view them as the same or not, I don't think that negates having a discussion about the Monero cover. It may influence it, but it doesn't negate it. It doesn't mean it's not worth having. There was also a lot of comments talking about realistic anatomy, but that's a whole other can of worms in comics. I mean, if you are gonna open up the Pandora's box and we need to draw people realistically, Ooh. Say goodbye to about 85% of stuff. A lot of times the focus is more on stylization and emotional and visceral impact on what looks cool not on how we actually look. So many felt that that argument was also selectively applied. At the end of the day, when people feel attacked, they tend to respond in kind. I'm a big fan of keeping discussion lines open. Again, I can see why for some this was the aha moment. However, for me, it just opens up the questions about male and female sexualization and why it's more common to see one more focused on the other or more noticed than the other in certain corners. But if you disagree with me, that's absolutely fine. If you're like, girl, did you lose your glasses again, even though you're wearing them? 
Those are the same cover. They're both equally hot, equally unsuggestive, equally boring, equally anything, whatever you think. I got a lot of comments in this one and some were really, really intriguing. Some were highlighting the idea that they felt it was just a publicity stunt. Some were convinced I was super angry and hate butts of all kinds, full of anti-butt rage. I mean, let me tell you, a world without butts would be a very painful place indeed. Because we all know that when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get I did get one comment yelling at me for not telling my audience what to think. No, I don't want to tell people what to think. I mean, if I think something, other people don't think something, that's fine. I say echo, you say chamber, echo. So what do you think? Seeing these covers side by side again, or maybe for the first time, are they the same cover to you? And do you think they deserve to have the same reaction? Do you care? Was the thing that angered you if you were aware of this controversy in the first place, the fact that it happened or the tone? What is the controversy that has happened that you have felt completely divorced from? Everybody else around you seems really passionate about it and you're just sitting there like, eh. Let me know down below. Also, a special thanks to Lexington Wolfcraft who sent in this lovely piece of fan art. I really appreciate it. Also, it's me as one of my favorite superheroes, Nightwing, hooray. This made me smile and made my day. So thanks so much for sending it along. So as always, thanks so much for watching Casually Comics. I appreciate you for taking some of your time out of your day to discuss comics with me. If you enjoyed this content, again, do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.